Hi guys, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial lesson 24. In this video, we learn how to use the value map we get in QGIS. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so so that you can get a notification when I upload the next lesson. If you're new to my channel, you can follow all my previous lessons and useful GS tips on the links in the description box below. Let's get started. So today we are going to be talking about the value map we get. How do you control attribution in QGIS? I know many people want to create databases with no mistakes and they want their, their work to look tidy. So sometimes when you're dealing with the database, you'll find that uh, when people are trying to edit some information in the database, they actually make a lot of spelling mistakes. Like, like for example, when you're digitizing a road and someone writes it as RD, rod in small letters, rot, rot, rat, and many, many other examples, you'll find that this is actually a problem with the people when they're working on the different devices and they're trying to just edit data for you. And this is quite a problem, especially when you want a very good output of the work in your database. Retrieving some information might be very, very difficult and also consume a lot of your time. So these things sometimes are very annoying. And that is why today I'm going to give you a solution. So let's go to QGIS and look at today's exercise. I'm going to open QGIS and load a blank project by going to project and then saying new project. So I actually have a blank project here. So what we, what I want to do for this exercise today is we want to create some vegetation data. We want to actually digitize some vegetation data that is going to be useful uh, to just demonstrate what you're talking about. And I have the some information about this vegetation. And you can see I have the kind of vegetation, which, uh, the different types of vegetation, that is the forests, grasslands, shrubs, uh, marshland and then desert and I want to put all this information in my attribute table and I want the person actually who is going to be doing the editing to just have a standardized way of actually entering this data so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to now create a new shape by layer or a new I can just create a new layer so I'm going to go to net layer new layer and I'm going to create a new geo package layer you can also create a new shape by layer so I'm going to just save the new geo package layer somewhere so I'm going to just save it in my test geo package. Then the name I'm going to call it test vegetation. Then the geometry type is going to be a polygon. So I'm going to select a polygon. I'm going to leave the projection of that. Then I'm going to have the following. So I'm going to have the code. I can have the code, which is a text data and the length I can put it at 20, add it to fields list. Then I can have the class. So for example, if they, there is some uh, forest class, uh, there is uh, the grasslands class, the shrubs class, and the marshland class. So I'm going to leave it at text data. I'm going to also leave it at 20, add field to list. Then I'm going to have the third one, which is the sub subclass. And what, what I mean with the subclass is, like for example here, this is the subclasses, like the forest deciduous, forest evergreen, forest rainforest, uh, forest mixed. These are the subclass. The class is the forest. The subclass is this. Uh, grassland, this is the subclass for the grassland. Uh, for the shrubs, this is the subclass. So I want to have this information and I, and I don't want the person who is going to be doing the edit to make any mistakes because when I'll be doing classification, then it will be very, very difficult for me to classify other things uh, that have the wrong spellings or written wrongly. And actually, this actually creates the database with no mistakes and you, your, your work will look tidy and easy to interpret. So I'm going to go back to QGS, so actually the subclass, it's a text data. For the subclass, I'm going to make it a bit longer. So 100, 100, because they might have more, more, more characters. So I'm going to add field to list. So I actually have three classes I have actually put in my new geo package layer. Then I'm going to click on OK. And it's loaded my new test vegetation on here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start digitizing. So I'm going to select digitize. Then I'm going to select the yellow pencil and then add polygon. And then I just going to digitize something randomly on there on here and you can see i have an fid that is auto generated but then there is a code here and for example the code for uh, forest is a 
then uh, the class that uh, that we're talking about is forest so you can see i can even i have even done a mistake already so uh when typing so the class now is maybe say uh, dense forest and this is quite cumbersome when you're doing this because uh, typing becomes very very difficult so what you're going to do is we're going to see a way around this so i'm going to just click on cancel so that i can create this then i'm going to look at the properties so i'm going to right click on my layer go to properties then i'm going to scroll to attribute form and the fields here are now actually shown so we have the code we have the class and we have the subclass so we want to actually do some customizations in, in that we can just enter this information very very quickly without having to struggle about about it so the first way i'm going to show you is how to enter the code we have actually we have five codes there's a b c d and e that represent the different classes of vegetation so you will see under the widget type here it is text edit so i'm going to do a different i'm going to just click on the drop down here and then instead of uh, text edit i'm going to select value map then a new empty space appears here and you can see there's the value and description so just for the first uh, customization i'm going to do is i'm going to just say for this first value is just a second value is just b the third value which is a uh, shablan is just c the fourth value is just going to be d and then our fifth value which is a desert is going to be e then i'm going to add a null value just in case there is one that is none of the uh, not among the above so i'm going to just click on add null value here so that i have an null value and i'm going to click on apply then okay so let's go back and try to do editing so i'm going to select again this and it's still active so i'm going to digitize just something on my screen here and finish and digitizing and you can see the fid is still auto generated but the code when i when i look at the code now you can see there's a null value here but there's a drop down now when i select this drop down here i can select a for that but i still need to type the class and which is going to be very cumbersome again so i need to also do the same thing for the class so i'm just going to click on cancel then let's go back again to the to our attribute form the, the properties of the attribute so i'm going to click on properties so i'm going to look at the attribute form again we have actually worked with the code already and you have added the description so you're going to go to the class it is still a text edit also i'm going to change it to value map again and i have my empty space here to put my values so for the, for the first one which is a i'm going to put forest then the second one which is b i'm going to put grassland and i have actually now customized that i can also even add a null value at the end of it so that if i have one that is not part of either of these values or the description about it then i can just uh, put it as null then i'm going to click on apply okay and you can now see when i go to edit again now stop editing finish the edit you can see now the code i can actually select a for the the code and then the class i can select either a forest b so i'm just going to do a little bit of a customization so that we can actually it can actually not confuse the person who is actually doing the en entry of this data so i'm just going to go back to the same i'm going back to the class then at the beginning of each i'll put a short code here I'm going to click apply OK. Then when I go back and then I try to just digitize. And now it will be much easier because this is A. And then just look for A, which is forest. And you can see now it becomes much easier. So let's go back to now to the last one, which is the subclass. 
And for these, I've actually created a CSV file that is going to aid us so that we can save on some time. So I'm going to look at the CSV file and let's look at how the CSV file looks like. And you can see I have already created a CSV file. So A1, which has the uh, the forest, A12 has the forest evergreen and all that. So you can see this is one class of forest. Then this is another class of grassland. And then there is another class here of shrub. So we want to actually now put these as our, our subclass. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at sample 2 CSV. So I'm going to just click on cancel here. Then I'm going to open my properties again. Then I'm going to select subclass. And then I'm going to select the value map. And under the value map now, you can see there's a combo, combo box for predefined item. So I'm not going to load it from my data, uh, data from the layer, but I'm going to load data from a CSV file. So I'm going to just browse for where the CSV file is. It is on my desktop, GIS, data, value map. Then I have some sample CSV here. So I'm going to use sample CSV2, which has that information. And you can see now it populates all the information that we have. Let me just expand this, but you can actually be able to see everything that is within my CSV. And you can see it has the value. I'm going to just delete the first one here. So it has the value. Then it has uh, the description about this value. So we, we can actually even use a CSV file to use to create our value map. I'm going to click on apply and then okay. And then right now when I go and start digitizing, and now I can put the code, like for example, A, the class is for A is forest, then the subclass for that, you can see all the subclasses now appear here, including a null value here. So what you can do is I can say the for subclass is A1, which is forest deciduous. Then I click on OK and I have my first K file. I go to another region which has some forest. I say also A. Then this is forest still because it's A. Then it is forest rainforest. And you can see it's called 1 3. Then I can go to another region again. Then I select B. B is grassland. And the subclass is. Uh, maybe that I say okay I go to another region I map select C then I say C is a shrubs then the subclass of C is maybe say this close to open which is a thicket I say okay and you can actually see now it's very easy for you to just do your edits I'm going to go to D and smash land and D only has one option here and then OK. And I can also go to E again. And E also has just one value, desert. And I'm going to say OK. And you can see how easy it has become. I'm also going to go to A, back to A, and I'm going to say forest. I'm going to select something different, maybe say mixed forest. Okay. And you can see we can actually do this as many times as we want. And we will be very, very comfortable because now our database will just have the exact information that we need to have without any typos, without any spelling mistakes that might be cumbersome to look at, especially when you are dealing with a database and might return the wrong values when you're doing your analysis. So this will be quite useful for your data editing stuff because then you'll have some little bit of uniformity in the kind of work that you expect at the end of the digitizing process or data editing process. And this is very helpful, especially when now retrieving data from the, ge the geodatabase everything will be matching and have the appropriate 
spelling. So I'm going to click on save edits, then I'm going to stop editing. And then you're going to look at the attribute table to see if we have our information. And you can see our information looks good. If I arrange them in ascending order in any way, you can see now there's a lot of matching of all these information and there's no uh, typos, no spelling mistakes. And it actually makes your work very easy, especially if you have poor typing skills like me. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on QGIS, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when I upload my next video. Otherwise, I'm just happy you're here. See you in my next video. Thank you.